Hello, this is Crazy Softball Dad, and I want to welcome you to a really great show today. First, uh, happy Father's Day to all those crazy softball dads out there. I know you guys had a wonderful time, and, you know, again, just thank you so much for all you do for your softball girls out there. And same to the crazy softball moms, because there's just as many of them out there as well. Um, let's just get right down to it. Today, I want to introduce our first guest of our first show. Um, he's a legend. Um, he's done so much for girls softball. Um, he is none only than the Harry Ketchup Bottles head coach, Coach Lance. Thanks, Mike. Pleasure to be here. So, Coach Lance, I know that in your past you were part of Second City. Tell us a little bit more, um, some other movies and things that you've been involved in before All-Stars. I started doing a series of movies called Police Academy. And uh, we did, there, there were six of them. I wasn't, my character wasn't in the first one. My character Proctor came in in number two and I did two through six. Um, and that was great fun. And then I wrote, I've been writing, I wrote on uh, several series and produced and um, uh, started directing. And uh, and then I always wanted to do this movie, really. I mean, I always wanted to do a movie. Um, but when, when I started my family, when we moved out to L.A., I had a son and a daughter. And my daughter, when she was about five or six, we started playing minis in softball. And um, from then on, we just kept stayed with softball. And she was a little pitcher and then grew up into a big pitcher. And uh, she was really good. And I, I coached her all the way through rec ball. And then, uh, then she went to um, club ball and travel ball. And I kind of stepped back a little bit, and I was one of the dads in the stands. And uh, I always said when she moved, uh, when she went to college, I would like to come back and and coach in the uh, in the rec league again, which is what I did. She she was uh, she she was she went to college and uh, uh, played softball in, in college, and I came back and started coaching again. And I always had all through my, my years with her going to games and coaching games. I knew every one of the parents who were in the movie. I mean, these ridiculous, the ridiculous behavior of the adults far outweighed the, the, the ridiculous behavior of the kids. The kids were, you know, I, I always knew too that if I got any 12 little girls of 10 and under, I was going to have 12 little personalities because that had been every team I had ever coached. Um, but I really wanted to highlight the outrageous behavior of the softball parents and coaches and umpires and, and board members. It's just on and on. But my feeling was it really isn't, just softball it's every youth activity it's every youth sport it could be anything i mean it could be the chess team and the the dad over in the corner just so tense watching his son going don't move the pawn don't touch the pawn it's you get so into you know you're living vicariously through your child you want them to do so well and it's a it become it starts to become a reflection of you if they succeed you succeed but um all every every parent in the movie i i you know i i modeled specifically on someone or a couple of people i had known through the years and i know you've known them too on your team <laughs> yeah so which one were you well, I was Lance. I was oh, okay. the coach. Um, and maybe, you know, and I, I probably over the course of all those years was all of them, honestly. <laughs> but, uh, no, I mean, I, I pretty much played me, and, and I had an actress playing my wife. And my wife was, I mean, in, in real life, my wife was on the board. 
and she used to come home and tell me about the board meetings. She'd go, you know, we had like an hour and a half discussion about the socks. I go, what do you mean? She'd go, well, you know, some people thought they should be striped and some thought they should have dots and then some thought they should just be plain because that would detract from the, I'm going, wow, man, that's, that's really detailed stuff you're getting into there. And uh, it was just everything. It was funny. And, you know, I thought, well, this could be great fodder. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. It It is funny too. Cause when we watch the movie and it, and we've watched it from, you know, since it came out, so what was that, 2014? Yeah. So from then on, we've watched it. And so we've, I have a daughter who's 14 right now and going to be a sophomore. And we've, I've coached her through the ranks. And every year it gets a little bit, you know, different, right? You yeah. notice that. Yeah, but, yeah. And every year we have those parents, board members, umpires. I mean, it's, it is so dead on and, um, now, the first year that we watched it, this was kind of funny, and I feel terrible for this girl because she played with us all the way through up until just last year, and she got labeled Lizzie because oh. she sh- she showed up. We had team the the very first team bonding meeting we had before practice started. We everyone came to watch the movie at our house, and then we had a couple of practices, and then in comes this girl um, that no one knew and. Immediately, everyone called her Lizzie. So, like, so that our, my our, our girl Sierra became Lizzie for, throughout most of her softball career with oh. us. Uh, and it is funny because it's just there. There is that person. Um, yeah. And for sure. the association with the movie with what these girls are doing is just awesome. And oh yeah, thanks. You know, and it's funny you're, you're talking about the girls. Um, when we were casting the girls, I wanted, um, none of the girls were, were actresses. They, well, they thought they were, I mean, by the end of the movie, they all thought they were, <laughs> but in the beginning, uh, none of them were actresses. They hadn't done anything and I didn't want actresses. I, they were all softball players and I, because it was way more important to me. I didn't have a lot of time to shoot the movie. So, uh, I didn't have time to teach them softball. And it was much more important to me that I have, you know, 12 little girls that, that um, would act natural, just be natural, be yourselves, and knew how to play softball. So I didn't have to teach them, the, you know, everything about softball. And I wanted them at different skill levels. And Lizzie, our, my Lizzie in the movie, was that little thing. I mean, you know, with the bat on her shoulder and looking around, not having any idea. But there's always the flower picker, you know, out in the outfield. And um, at that level, at that age, particularly, the 10, 10 and under, I thought, was a, a great age because there are some who are, are, you know, really kind of advanced for 10 and very good softball players. And then there are others who are just learning the game. And I wanted all different levels. Um, and that was really the fun of it. I, all, I knew – uh, when we started, I wanted to run everything so that it was like, um, it, I wanted to shoot it like almost like a reality show. So I wanted, I told all the, the adults in it that, who played their parents, whenever they were on the set or, or the set was the field, the baseball, the softball field. So whenever you're uh, near the field or near your daughter, I, I want you to be in character, a- act like her parents and, and, treat her as if she's your daughter and stay in character. And they did because I had my, my camera operators shooting all the time. And I said, just shoot everything. And anytime they're interacting, shoot it. And I'll see if I can use it later. Um, and I, cause I wanted the, the girls to kind of forget about the car- the, the cameras and just be natural. Uh, and then I ran practices as if I was the coach, which I, I was their coach. And, uh, but, you know, forget we're doing a movie. And I ran the practices like practices. We tried to stage the games as if they were games. And um, then I would put everything together in editing. So I'm thinking, well, this is going to be great because they're going to forget totally about the cameras and they'll just be natural little softball players. 
So we're in the dugout, and I could, I could feel, you know, somebody tugging on my shorts. And I looked down, and I go, you know, yes, what is it? Uh, Samantha, what, what do you need? She goes, um, are we on, are we in action? And so they had never forgotten that they were in a movie. They were all, you know, like, oh, well, this is, we're actresses. But it was really, it was a lot of fun. And, and again, as long as they knew how to play softball, and, and that saved me a lot of time. That's awesome. Um, tell me a little bit, um, what are some crazy moments in filming? You had some some pretty eclectic stars, uh, the late Fred Willard, which yeah. I absolutely love, and, and heartbroken to see that, oh. to see him go. Uh, yeah, we but, just lost Fred, just lost him. Fred, so, Fred, Fred was uh, a great guy. As I said, I started out at Second City, and about half of the cast was from Second City because I wanted people with that skill set. I wanted actors who could improvise and um, had a comedy background. And Fred, I wrote Fred's um, uh, uh, role for him, uh, John Carson, the, the head of the, 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 the whole league. And um, I used to tell Fred, you know, Fred, in my book, you're the funniest man on the planet. He was just so funny. And all the interview stuff you see um, in the movie where we're – where he's just kind of talking to the camera and usually Miriam is with them and they're talking to the camera. Well, we shot that in like a day and it was the most fun day ever because I sat just off screen next to the camera and I would just feed them questions. And then Fred would just riff and he's so funny. And then I would cut it together later with my my role in that was I'm off camera just trying not to laugh and break <laughs> the scene. He was so funny, and uh, that was such a great time. And he, Fred also knew – he's a big sports fan. Um, he didn't know so much about softball. He was really a baseball guy. He grew up in Cleveland, and, and he knew – he could tell you every Cleveland Indians player from, you know, the 50s on. Uh, and uh, their their records, and he was really a big baseball fan. But so he really appreciated what we were doing. And as a matter of fact, where we shot it was it's it's a his guest room in his house where he has all this baseball paraphernalia. And I kind of used that in the movie just because it looked so spectacular. And then we put a lot of softball stuff in there too. But um, he. He was a delight, man. I mean, I, I wrote it for him. I don't know how I could have done it without him in that role. He's so funny. Yeah, that's uh, – that. he was a, a big, big person in that, in that movie. Yeah. And, you yeah, know, it was, it was written – really, the whole movie was, was all about Fred Willard's style, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah, that's right. Um, what other kind of uh, – Back, background stories do you have from the movie? Um, I, I know that, you know, the big moment came when John Goodman came at the end. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about that. Oh, oh well, I had written the movie. Uh, in the script, it said, um, I think I put in the script, let's see, uh, uh, Debbie Shipman, it was written as Debbie Shipman's brother. And Debbie had, had a, a, a brother who was going to be a, a, a movie star, a very famous movie star. So I, put, I wrote in the script, um, George Clooney, or the biggest star I can get. Because I don't know George Clooney. But that's the time, that was the, the, the thought, the idea. So I don't know George Clooney, but um, I know John. and Because John and I did uh, dinner theater together you know, decades ago in Springboro, Ohio together. So uh, I call, I, I called John and said, John, I have this project. I'd love for you to, you know, just take a look at it and see if you're, you happen to be in L.A. You know, I'd love for you to just come on by and do a cameo for me. 
and he said, well, send me the script. So I sent him the script, and he read the script, and he uh, emailed me back and said, buddy, I think you got gold here. Um, but I can't, I'm, I'm shooting something in New York. I can't do it. I'm busy. I'm so sorry. Good luck. And so I went, oh, shoot. Okay. So we start shooting the movie, and I don't have anybody for that role yet. I know I, you know, I'm just going, we're going on a wing and a prayer going on. I'm <laughs> just going on faith that we'll find somebody. I'm going to get somebody. And uh, really, I mean, we, let's see, we probably shot that on like day seven and we're into day three, I think. And um, I'm on, we're on the set. We're between scenes and I have my cell phone and I never really even have my, I mean, I never even turn it on. I, I never answer it when I'm shooting, but we were between scenes and it started vibrating and I look on it and it's John. And I hope, I mean, I, 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 I click it on and I said, John, I hope you're calling me to tell me you can do this movie. And he said, well, listen, uh, I can do it if you could shoot it on Saturday. Now, our budget was so tight and our timeline was so tight that I couldn't really, I couldn't change anything. We already had everything, the schedule all mapped out. Um, and I had that role shooting on Friday, not Saturday. And I said, you can't do Friday? He goes, no, I can only do Saturday. And I said, I'm thinking, well, geez, I can't change anything. And I hear myself go, okay, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll do it on Saturday. And we changed things, even though, I mean, it was really tough to because I had locations locked down. But he came in and, oh, my gosh, he was so cool. He was just so great. He hung out all day. His agent told me he can only be there for like two hours, two hours, and he's got to be gone. I go, okay, okay, we'll, we'll shoot him in and out. And he gets there, and I go, oh, John, I know you got to get out of here in two hours. He goes, what do you mean? And I said, well, I, your agent said, he goes, no, I, I, I can hang all day. So he just hung out with us, and the girls loved him. Uh, but and he was great, you know, he was great. That's awesome. Oh, that's pretty lucky. You know, you yeah, oh yeah, he lining. was a he was a Mitch. That's a real friend in need, there, buddy. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, when you made the movie, did you think that you would become kind of this cult following with the softball world? No, you're kind of just telling me that, Mike. <laughs> no, uh, no, what I hoped was that it would reach um, our community, the softball community, and I really hoped that it would, through grassroots stuff, kind of expand out into um, into any, any uh, rec league or – sport that any youth the, the youth sports world um because i do think it's a universal message really i mean i think it's it's and and the characters are universal they're in it could be you know baseball or softball or or football or you know tennis uh golf team whatever whatever team your your kids are on or dance you know i mean dance moms is the same kind of idea right. where it's just the, the mom's you know reacting all the time it, it, so it's really any youth sport or activity where the the parents get so invested in their children i thought it spoke to and that was my hope yeah well, you did an amazing job let's uh take a quick break here and, and let's sure. play the trailer um for okay. the 10 people in the uh softball world that haven't seen it and give them <laughs> a chance to see it all right, great. Congresswoman Patsy Mink fought to get uh, Title IX passed. That's really when girls' and women's sports just took off. It's always an exciting time of year for us. And I look at some of them and I say, they're terrible. But, right. you know, but every year, they seem to be getting better and better. Uh, would you just watch this, though? Do you see that? Yeah, it looks good. That one was girly. She is a girl. Doesn't have to throw like a girl. Play ball! <laughs> You're not here. Go she can't away. catch. I can throw balls at her. Go all day long. You know these girls just mean so, so much. 
so damn much to me. The youngest age groups have the most out of control parents. Get her out of there! Every call is life or death. Oh! And every parent knows more than every coach and every umpire. I told you, I gave you the numbers. I you gotta say, if I'm I... being honest, I disagree with most every decision you made With just everything you did. You're a big league jerk. I'd like to coach a team of kids whose parents are all dead. I remember when you used to say, we're not in it to win it, we're in it to fun it. Remember that saying? Yeah, yeah well that was stupid. She's got her mother's thighs. I don't know what the hell it is. Let's get dirty, okay? All right. You know what I'm talking about? I'm so sorry they didn't have a Title VIII when I was... Title IX. No, but Title VIII, which would mean that I had to play. John, you've got to play today. It's the law. There's the trailer, Coach, and... and you know, I, I can't help but to laugh through the whole thing every time I see it. You know, sometimes you, you're afraid of a, a movie when you go see a movie and you watch the trailer and you think, well, there's the whole movie right yeah. there. Everything, all, all the funny stuff has been in it. Absolutely, 100% not. I'll oh, just say that right now. With this movie, not. Oh, so for right. the 10 of you that haven't seen it, um, you're, <laughs> this is just the to tickle your toes because – uh, I I just I just told I mean we watched it this weekend again we do watch it quite a bit my daughter's old now so uh, <laughs> it's a little bit different but she still loves to watch it and uh, she was hoping to be able to come in and poke her head in and say hi to you and but she's um she's at the beach so oh, of course she is <laughs> you know we we do what we do um what else you know one of my favorite scenes. Uh, as a as a coach and as a parent, one of my favorite scenes was the scene where um, the girl, one of the girls, was going to get a new bat, and the the parents were asking, "What bat do you get?" Because I get that all the time. I'm like, "Yeah, well, bats and bat technologies changes every twenty seconds anyway." But when they brought when they started talking about the Mike and Freak, yeah. I just rolled because. Oh, good. That is what <laughs> that really does happen. I mean, that really does happen. Oh, yeah, it is. It's about the behavior of the parents. And, you know, they're thinking, I know the dad especially was thinking, you know, she could use a stick because it's her first <laughs> year and what, whatever. We didn't any bat, but you get caught up in the competition of it. So, you know, they're in the, the sporting goods store and then. Richard comes in, the, one of the other dads, and he's taught, you know, and he starts floating things about his daughter having been an all star and all oh, she uses this unbelievable bet. But your daughter doesn't need that kind of bet because you, <laughs> then you go, well, What do you mean my daughter doesn't need that kind of bet? My daughter can, she's going to be, she'll be, a, she'll be an all star soon. And you know, you start, and that's when the comp, the, the hair goes up on your neck and you, you get competitive. And you know, I thought always thought it was so funny because they're 10 and under. I mean, these are 10 and under, but it could start in the peewees. And there's a line in the movie that, um, you know, the older, o older parents are really kind of more laid back and calm because they've been around the block a few times, but the younger parents are really nutty. And it's kind of true. I mean, at the beginning, I remember in, in, in the minis, we're not even supposed to keep score. And parents are, you know, competitive. and They're figuring out who's winning, and it's just as nutty. But I always, I always felt, you know, there have been so many movies with uh, boys' sports, as you were saying, and like Bad News Bears and all that. And, but I always thought, man, it's funnier to me to see a dad yelling, get dirty, get down, get dirty, to, you know, an eight-year-old little girl sliding in and with absolutely the same intensity as if it was, you know, a 17-year-old a senior in high school got boy sliding yeah. in. It's just that's the, the way of the world. That's, that's us. No, absolutely. Absolutely. And that's why I said you, you did it dead on on all the different types of parents and all right. the different – I mean – 
I can tell you right now that I would have stopped the first year if I had all those types on one team. Uh, <laughs> I never, <laughs> I never had that experience, but I've had multiple oh, yeah. for sure. Um, oh yeah, and like I said, my, they were all based on somebody. I had the dad who was the stats guy, and he kept stats. And I mean, you could go to him. He knew his daughter's stats, but he knew every other girl's on the teams too. Their, their stats. Uh, their batting averages, their ERAs, everything. Um, and he always kept the book, whether he had the official book or not, he had his own book. And, I mean, you could you could go – it was like an encyclopedia. You could go back through the years of his books <laughs> and find out, you know, how many strikes she had on her at, on that during that at bat when she finally connected and popped up. Well, the count was, you know, and I'm going, man, oh man, that's pretty, pretty, pretty detailed stuff. I had him. I had, um, uh, you know, the the parents who were like the 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 the, the well, I, I, every parent, but the ones, the, the guy who owned the, um, uh, the, the 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 store, and he was in in his. Um, pawn shop. I had those parents. They didn't own a pawn shop, but he was really a, you know, a, a, I didn't never knew he was such a great guitarist. And yeah. he worked on, he actually worked at um, a guitar center. And so he would, we, my son, I went in once to buy a guitar for my son who wanted to take lessons when he was young. And there was Roy in the guitar center. And I said, Roy, I didn't know you worked here. And he goes, oh yeah. He goes, what are you looking for? And he goes, I said, well, I don't know. He wants an electric guitar. He wants to take guitar lessons. He goes, okay. And he starts picking up guitars and just wailing on him. He goes, what do you want to play? Uh, like uh, rock and roll? And he's all of a sudden, you know, I'm listening to ZZ Top. And then, or blues. And then there's Taj Mahal. And then he's just <laughs> on and on, flipping through. Things. He was unbelievable. But I never knew it because all I knew him from was on the softball field. You know that was that was our our universe together, and and then you find out all these people. Oh yeah, they have these other lives, but you only see the lawyer and the doctor when they happen to you know when they're screaming at their daughter. Yeah, on the softball field. That's pretty funny. No, I I I see. I know that one. I know exactly yeah. what that is. And you know, a lot of times movies tend to come out. And they punch, and then they get put in the back. You know, they're on Netflix, and sometimes they're hard to find. and And I think this movie is not one of those movies. And I and I feel like, and number one, I think it's almost timeless because it doesn't matter if they're using a, a Mike and Freak or a De Marini Prism or any other bat. If it's in Santa Monica or Seattle, or it, right. it just doesn't matter. It's always going to be that same parent that same coach the same president the same umpire it's always going to be the same whether it's and that's it's very much like bad news bears i mean i can go back and watch bad news bears all the time because i was on that team you know mm -hmm. that was my dad as the coach um and and i'm hoping that that you know by doing this interview and and using this as a opportunity to keep sending it to new parents that are coming in because every time a new parent comes in, the younger, the younger parents, they'll watch it. They get excited about it. And then when new parents come in, they'll keep telling them about that. And that's what I'm hoping this is because like I told you, it's kind of our anthem. It's, it's our, it's our movie. You know, there's just not right. a lot out there. And, oh man, that's um, so nice of you to say, Mike. Thank you. I hope yeah. I hope the same thing. Believe so, me. I we definitely will stay in touch because I, I have a few ideas um, in the back of my brain here, and um, I, I think uh, I think there's some things that we can do um, as soon as COVID kind of yeah. <laughs> goes by the wayside, and yeah. and we can start you know interacting in in the public again. Um, but I think there's some some really cool things that if you're interested in keeping this this program alive, I think 
there's just so many opportunities. And oh, that's um, great. That's great. No, I'd love to hear them. I think uh, you know you're you're right down my alley. I mean, those are all my thoughts too. I always hope that as new parents came into the league, they would discover this movie because it's about them too. And there's constantly a turnover of of you know new people coming in and girls going up through the ranks so i hope you're right yeah i th i think i will be i at least for now i really do i and um i'm excited at least that i can at least be some kind of participant in it right now um mm -hmm. to and i hope to see this as my daughter grows and yeah. um you know y you were telling me how your daughter kept playing and going on and on and on and yeah um and so tell me because you you told me a little bit how how when she finally went off to college and she stopped playing softball and you went back tell me how that went and um because yeah, i think all of us dads out there and moms that are coaches and have kids in the in there it, it's a sad day when the kids stop it is and it is. um tell me tell me about that and t tell us tell us how you went back in well, I I always kept in touch with uh, the, the people, uh, you know, the, the, the rec league at Santa Monica. And um, I'd known, you know, I'd spent so many years there and I knew so many of the people. And a lot of them, um, you know, I, I would, uh, like we played with their daughters who might have been the oldest daughter and then they had younger daughters. So they had stayed as, you know, the older one's gone now, but they had a younger daughter in the league. So they might still be there or they were there more recently. I just had, um, I had deep roots in that community. And uh, I kind of, I just put out the, the feeler that, you know, if, if anybody, you know, if, if there's an opportunity or you're short coaches, um, let me know. And they, you know, said, yeah, come back, let's do this. And so I did. And um, I'll tell you, it was a, it's a different experience when your daughter's not on the team. It is very different. Uh, I mean, I, I look back on it, and I think in a lot of ways I was way harder on my daughter because she was my daughter. And I – uh, you know, I, I know a lot of coaches will be able to understand that. You know, you 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 don't want anybody thinking you're favoring your daughter. I mean, I think honestly, she probably spent more time on the bench than she would have if I weren't the coach, because I didn't want anybody to think I was favoring her, and um, I was probably more critical of her than I would be others, because I wanted people to know I wasn't being soft on her. So now when I, there's nobody, you know, I mean, I'm not related to anybody on the team. It was, you know, it's, it's a kind of a different, a different thing. It was, it's no less satisfying maybe, or I don't know. It's a, it's different. It's different. I mean, it's very satisfying, but um, you can kind of relax a little bit and really just concentrate on, uh, on everybody. I mean, you want everybody to excel always anyway, but you don't have to throw that one on the bench so you don't, you know, we don't want anybody to think I'm favoring that one. Uh, I I can relate to that. I I know my daughter has sat multiple innings because you're not – in rec ball, you're not supposed to sit anyone twice until. But, you know, right. it's like my kid was definitely the one sitting twice most of the time because yeah. you don't want to – Create, uh, right. You know, a I mean, there, daddy are, there are those other coaches that go the other way and never sit their daughter, see their daughter yeah. too. That was Billy in the movie. Oh, I mean, okay. I've played those coaches too, but, but you and I weren't those coaches. Yeah, no, I definitely related to uh, coach Lance quite a bit. <laughs> so, you know, we've used this movie, like I said, for, for, several years now as team bonding events uh where the girls can sit and watch the movie and, and the girls that keep playing on my teams they keep seeing the movie over and over again and it's like they miss things they get catch new things because they relate to it you know and you know i highly highly recommend to 
all of the coaches out there to use this movie as a great team bonding event. P put them in front of a garage or a, a outdoor screen or anywhere, you know, even in front of a TV to watch, and you'll be surprised. Bring the parents too, because the parents love it probably more than the kids do because they see themselves on TV. Um, Coach, where can the people buy the, the movie and the DVD? Well, I know you can get the DVD and the um, Blu-ray on Amazon. And uh, then I think you can rent it or buy it on a lot of the digital platforms like uh, iTunes and Hulu and, uh, you know, I don't know. Uh, but a, a lot of, uh, I know, you know, again, Amazon, you can rent it or buy it too. I love for people to um, to uh, grab the, the DVD or the Blu-ray if they get a chance. I mean, it's, I'll tell you, because there's all kinds of um, deleted scenes and extended scenes and bloopers on there that are hilarious too. So, uh, but I appreciate all the kind words about the team bonding, and I, I hope it, you know, that serves a purpose for that. Coach Lance, I, I want to thank you so much for coming on our show and spending as much time as you did talking about this great movie and the background to it. I feel like we could talk for hours and hours, and, you know, hopefully we'll be able to do it again in, in – Keep talking softball because that's why we are all here. We're all here for the the girls to play softball and and you share that passion that we all share. Um, so you are now officially a crazy softball dad. And I just want to thank you for coming on and spending time with us. And I hope everyone will use this video as a team bonding. Watch it, have fun with it and show it to your kids and and it's just an exciting thing so thank you again and listen i've had a great time um and there's a lot more we can talk about if you just want to talk about crazy softball stuff so let me know i'm happy to come back anytime all right mike thanks so much for having me